to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Amen. Let me start by truly appreciating the Lord Jesus Christ for the privilege to be here and then and then to appreciate um pastor shola for taking this burden this vision and making this happen alongside all the organizers and then please let's honor all the servants of the lord jesus christ here i came into a very powerful session of the altar call and my heart if if that was all that i saw and went back i would still be fulfilled truly speaking hallelujah I, I don't intend to keep us for long i was just sharing with pastor shola that um, i believe in what god is doing and more than we who are the privileged vessels that he's using we must focus on the bigger picture of what god is doing praise the lord and so all we are doing here is just building momentum to what he's doing we'll be here just for a few minutes i just thought to just introduce our session and then we'll pray i heard that um there have been massive prayer sessions that have been ongoing there there is never enough prayer for anything praise the lord you pray and you pray again um prayer for instance has many assignments in the life of a believer and um, for many believers they understand prayer as the instrument that can help you to obtain promises and that is correct there is a dimension of prayer allocated for obtaining promises but then primarily the assignment of prayer is not just for obtaining promises prayer is one of the spiritual mechanisms that transforms you into a higher and a superior version of yourself the bible says in luke chapter 9 and verse 29 it says as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his garment became as white as raiment so the assignment of prayer really it's not just for receiving things the assignment of prayer is to help you evolve into a a greater dimension of yourself spiritually hallelujah when we pray we are not just conscious of receiving things or even contending with the forces of darkness these are all dimensions of prayer you can pray as an instrument of warfare and intercession you can pray to obtain promises but the greatest assignment and the original assignment of prayer jesus never prayed because he was weak jesus never prayed because he was incapable remember that was the word the word of god even filled with the holy spirit and yet he prayed he never prayed as god god does not pray but when he became a man he prayed because he spake a parable luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint hallelujah praise the name of the lord so i'm just saying this to challenge us so that when you find one minister after another coming to challenge you to pray don't allow the devil pray on your flesh to make you feel that you are wasting time what is this times of prayer are times of growth in the spirit hallelujah when you grow the bible says they set themselves and while they were praying and fasting the holy ghost said unto them it is in the place of prayer that the holy ghost speaks to them 
not just one person he spoke to them everyone heard it separate me paul and barnabas but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head one more time but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head please sit for a minute ezekiel chapter 19 from verse 8 and 9 i will just share something and then we'll pray ezekiel chapter 19 Ezekiel chapter 19 I sense in my spirit that there will be much prayer in this conference because of what God is doing in the lives of individuals and there are very clear spiritual indices let me say this to measure and sponsor the spiritual growth of an individual there is no mysticism around spiritual growth spiritual growth happens at the instance of engaging yourself with very exact spiritual principles number one the ministry of the word number two the ministry of prayer number three the ministry of fellowship with the spirit number four the ministry of fellowship with the body these are the indices that make for spiritual growth so if you say you are growing we have a right based on these parameters to probe your growth if we do not see your passion for the word your passion for prayer are we together now we do not see the times that you spend with God. You cannot grow in arbitrarily in secret. No. It is always the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer and the ministry of your personal fellowship with the Holy Spirit and the diverse ministries of the body of Christ. This is what can make any individual to grow one of the things one of the burdens that god has put in my heart especially in this season is helping to challenge the body of christ to not only return to god's patterns but to rest to be restored to doctrine the the zone of safety of the believer is when we return to doctrine a methodical approach to our spiritual understanding and a methodical approach to our growth the narrative and and the deception of knowing god for yourself which is not a very which is not a wrong statement but the devil has cashed in on that thing so people just evolve out of nowhere with with patterns that are not verified are we together now it is these kinds of pseudo christian experiences that continue to lead to the diversity of errors that are destroying the body of christ the bible says there is an ancient part jeremiah 6 16 it does not ask you to look for it or look try to invent another one it says to stand ye in the way and to see and to ask for that ancient path that old path it says when you find it walk in it and you will find rest for your soul hallelujah yes so we we have to we have to respect doctrine the doctrine of scripture the bible even says that god himself 
honors his word above his name are we together failure to do this will lead to experiences by and from well-meaning individuals there is no parameter for vetting spiritual experiences because how based on what parameter do you tell me i'm wrong if i tell you i'm hearing a voice now and the voice is speaking how do we vet whether it is the voice of a demon or it is the voice of the holy spirit because as far as i the recipient is concerned i am hearing a voice and if the voice says this man his name is pastor shola and i say sir is your name pastor shola and he says yes based on my experience i'm comfortable with that influence what becomes the basis now for discerning the purity of that voice what if there are multiple voices speaking to me at different times you see all of this this is not even what i'm talking about oh i don't even know how i got here now talking about this is until we become matured maturity is not measured just by greek and hebrew words maturity is not just measured by longevity around church activities maturity is the degree to which you have submitted first to the holy spirit and then number two to doctrine the bible says that they submitted themselves to the apostles doctrine and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread acts chapter 2 and verse 42 so until we come to a point where we are able to submit to the doctrine of scripture so that when a believer is saved we know what to do with him regardless the church the the spiritual growth of that believer should not necessarily depend on what church he attends there should be a formula that is greater than denominations the same way there are many schools in abel kuta am i right primary schools now all of you here did not go to the same primary school but at the end of it there are certain things that regardless the school you should have the bible calls it the things that are most surely believed among us so that whether a believer gets saved from xyz assembly or gets saved from xyz cathedral we are happy all together that he's saved why because the doctrine that he will submit to for his growth is greater than the personal biases of the denomination are we together now until we exalt doctrine doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it is a a predefined body of knowledge allocated to produce a specific kind of people i would always give this example if you have a doctor someone who is studying say in a university here and another person is studying in a university in the north another person is studying in a university somewhere abroad if all of them eventually grow to become consultants did you know it is possible that the first time they ever meet will be in the theater and they will not be afraid there's no need being afraid of one another because they are the course content they submitted to to become consultants is greater than even the lecturer that becomes the basis of their confidence they are not going to say who taught you was it a muslim lecturer or a yoruba or an Igbo lecturer the most important thing is if you were a consultant then we know that doing this kind of surgery should not be strange this is how it must be failure to exalt the holy spirit and doctrine above men of god above ministries will lead to all kinds of casualties so i can go on a 10 day 40 day fast sincerely so in the wilderness because i'm looking for more of god and because i do not know that encounters have rules of engagement i can blindly open up my spirit to any influence i find in that forest and have all kinds of strange extra human encounters just because it is a spirit being does not mean it's of god the realm of the spirit is a vast realm with all kinds of influences paul said i'm already preaching my night session there is as it were many voices he says and none of them is without significance the voice of the holy spirit is not the only voice you can hear you can be exposed to all kinds of influences and people have sincerely they don't have to be evil the compromise of doctrines has led people 
they are not bad they are not you know love jesus christ but then they find themselves in these experiences and they begin to interact with celestial entities that are not exactly of god and they come up with messages they come up with impartations and you cannot necessarily say the individual is fake because he did not intend to deceive anybody but at the same time the results that are being produced clearly show that the hand of god is not there and the reason is because a sincere individual together with a wrong doctrine still leads to danger the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and that they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons seducing spirits if you understand the character of seduction seduction has no power over you until it comes in partnership with something that is already in you for instance if i am not hungry the temptation to turn stones to bread cannot work for me because there is nothing in me that connects to that temptation so seducing spirits have to study your appetite to introduce themselves to you so if your appetite is to become that prophet they will come from the angle of the prophetic if your appetite is to see souls one they will come disguising as a spirit that is planting passion for evangelism Are we together let's go back to our text ezekiel chapter 19 verse 8 and 9 let me read it from king james thank you jesus has god spoken to someone already the bible says then the nation set against him on every side from the provinces and spread their net over him he was taken in their pit verse 9 and they put him in a ward in chains and they brought him to the king of babylon now pay attention they brought him into the holes that his voice should no more be heard upon the mountains of israel the reason why they subjected him to all those attacks is that his voice should no longer be heard upon the mountains of israel just a brief charge and we'll pray there are many reasons why satan attacks believers principally because he is the chief adversary of everything righteousness but more than that please listen carefully the way the realm of the spirit works is that there are demonic entities that are sent to regions there are demonic entities that are sent to families there are demonic entities that are sent to individuals but there are demonic entities that are sent to mantles they don't know the individual and they don't care whoever is the carrier of that mantle will be the one those spirits are sent to now the spirits that are sent to mantles have a singular assignment their assignment is to make sure that the voice the voice that becomes the beacon of light under the influence of that mantle number one never rises to that position and if for any reason he can through spiritual intelligence find his way to that mountain that he never remains there please pay attention i show you a mystery and we pray when jesus was born you would think just because he was jesus he will be left in peace the very the very episode of the birth of jesus was mad in all kinds of attacks they came to herod and they said we have seen a star and this star has signified that there is another king that is born herod called on his necromancers and his wise men and his sorcerers he said please go and investigate check the archives of history is there so and so a thing that should happen like this and they came back and said truly there is such an information 
and herod said another king he said all right so you go on with your investigation find that king and let me know so that i will come and worship him immediately the spirit of the antichrist knowing that prophecy was in motion began to move the king who was helplessly under the influence of that spirit to find jesus christ so that they would kill him the reason why they ran away with jesus was because he could die if they met him as a baby they would have killed him and he would have died the only thing is that his body would not decay because the word is incorruptible but he would have died are we together now and they ran away and they hid and eventually when herod had died jesus now began to live his life and you would think satan would let him rest jesus now having been baptized of john the bible says the spirit drove him to the wilderness and there he prayed for 40 days praying and fasting the moment he was done the first person he met was not the people in his prayer group or his ministry satan left the whole earth and was waiting patiently for one person let me assure you satan is not looking for everybody there are people he will see and pass you are calling him he will pass you looking for certain things there are certain mantles he is looking who is carrying it now because the last person that took this grace is already dead and as it is we have not found it on anyone so there are spirits allocated to mantles and can i tell you if our generation does not understand the art of dominion we will never be able to achieve the purposes of god it's not just about impartation and rema when you begin this journey there are attacks that you must be trained to understand and how to circumvent your way and continue to excel there are families and people today who have no business going through certain things except that there is a prophetic word on their lives that has brought the interest of satan there there are women who have no business with barrenness except that a prophetic information came that from that womb a prophet is coming and the devil says what did you say let's turn our attention to this family satan is guided by god's interest whatever interests god becomes satan's agenda satan does not by default just have an agenda he's called antichrist that means he depends on christ to give him the vision on what to do what is god doing that's what satan needs to find out you are not the only one who is finding out what god is doing per season satan is also interested so he depends on your intimacy with god and he probes into your intimacy as god is downloading the prophetic blueprint of your destiny you are not the only one hearing it the realm of the spirit is also hearing it and god is saying now i'm preparing you for a new dimension in the spirit and there comes these attacks and many believers are sincere but there is a lot of ignorance in the body as to understanding the devices of the devil one of it is what i'm showing you in this scripture the bible says this king was bound and kept in chains with a singular assignment that his voice should no longer be heard upon the mountain of israel The madman in Gadara. Why was the devil interested in the madman in Gadara? Because he had the destiny of an evangelist. That man single-handedly was responsible for 10 cities. I'm sure a prophet came and spoke when he was born. Thou little baby, you will become a great evangelist. And the spirits of the Gadarene said, leave every other thing. Come to this man. He was not an evil man reverse the story of his of his miracle and you will see that gathering was under slavery because one man's voice was captured but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Psalm 
so the next time satan comes to jesus he comes directly and he brings forth three temptations number one turn this stone into bread focus on your individual need and jesus taught him that the agenda of the kingdom is greater than tea and bread for me the next temptation was the temptation of spirituality he took him to a high city a high the temple and said fall down after all there is an immunity you have as jesus fall down he shall put his angels to watch over you they will bear you up on their wings lest you dash your feet against a stone and the third temptation was that of dominion and glory he took him into an exceeding high mountain showed him the glories of the world and said all this has been given to me you bow and i will give it to you and the bible says satan left him one synoptic account says he left him for a season the next time he will come back he did not come back directly as satan he came as he came through peter manipulating the compassion of peter to insist that jesus would not go to die and jesus discerning you would have looked at what peter was telling jesus if i have someone like peter and he's talking to me like that i will even make him my assistant immediately but jesus looked and said no this is just, this is beyond compassion satan get thee behind me he said peter satan has desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brother the next time he would come to him he came through judas i have always thought that judas is not a bad man judas has received all kinds of insults in the body of christ judas was one of his most loyal people whoever you trust with money to trust you with money means there is a level of credibility read the parable of the talents to already give you a hint he gave on to some five some two some one according to their several abilities so he must have vetted judas that's why judas could not even do anything with the money and satan came through judas listen beloved people hear me your voice represents the platform by which and through which the purposes of god will be made known to the nations your voice represents your destiny your voice represents your relevance your voice represents your influence when john was in the wilderness the spirit of the antichrist through the pharisees came and they kept asking him who are you are you one of those people who are you and john made a very interesting statement he didn't say i am john he said i am the voice the voice i am the voice whatever subdues your voice has subdued your relevance and your capacity to noise the purposes of god as committed to you please listen to me the attack in this end time by the gates of hell is not just over the health of people satan is beginning to get desperate as he sees the time wrapping he's looking for voices voices potential voices and voices that are currently in the plan of god and as we'll be teaching later on there are many many ways and angles that he's coming in with all to silence your voice the bible says that they bound this man and locked him in a prison why so that his voice would no longer be heard upon the mountain of israel so all the destinies connected to that voice now will become victims of the captivity of one person so when i tell you that satan he will attack anybody but there are specific people that he's looking for in this end time and if you came for this conference it is not just because you saw a publicity material i tell you it's a solemn assembly from the realm of the spirit it's a summoning to come and learn the ways of god so that your voice will remain relevant announcing the purposes of the kingdom the bible says do not be ignorance of his devices 
Satan has devices. There are ways that he will silence the voice of many. History is full of men and women whose voices were silenced because they did not understand the writings of the world to know how to keep their voices relevant. This is my simple charge for us this afternoon. And we are going to pray and cry unto the Lord that he will grant us the privilege of having our voices remaining relevant on the mountain of Israel. That nothing and no one will be able to bind you like that man in Gadaria. The Bible says the man lived in caves and he was bound. Hand in chain. Notice every time they caught the apostles, they bound them and they kept them in prisons. Why? So that they would not preach in that name again. There was something about their voice and the preaching of the name. It was causing people to come to salvation and repentance within the land. Can I tell you this? Instead of Satan attacking 1 million people, 500 people, he will find out who do those 500 people listen to. So if, if God announces that he's bringing new mantle upon you, that's not the time to dance and brag. That is the time to return and say, Lord, teach me. Because if you are Elijah, Jezebel is coming. There are many of you because of the mantles and the things that God wants to do in your life. There are higher levels of separation and consecration to the point that God will give you rules that does not make sense. It is not for everybody. It's his way of protecting what is on you. And many times because we do not have discernment. Lord, why is my life like this? Why do you inconvenience me this much? And God is saying, you are carrying through your voice the destiny of nations. And there will be requirements. Can I tell you this? In the realm of the spirit, the proof of maturity is dependence. If you are independent, you are a child in the spirit. John 21, it says, when thou art young, you are allowed to go wherever you want to go. But when you become matured, one will hold you. So many of you have come here. I believe God put this burden in the heart of his servant to call for a solemn assembly. Do you know why? Because there are many people, young people especially, who love God. You know, many times when I see a generation of young people with their passion, I am touched by the passion, but I'm also afraid of the ignorance. Passion and ignorance is risky because then what if I am thirsty, anything that looks like water, I will drink it. We need to be able to lay off superstar Christianity and Apostle Joshua Selman and all of this nonsense and focus on helping a generation preserve this spiritual heritage of revealing Christ. You will be learning that one of the ways that Satan binds men and shuts their voices is using this subtle evil of complacency. Why do I need to preach again when my voice is everywhere? Why do I need to fast again when I can lay hands on anyone and you stand up from the wheelchair? Let me tell you what happens. One of the ways that Satan can destroy you is to create an avalanche of commendation over your grace. You can be commended to an extent that your voice becomes silent because there is something about the human spirit under the influence of applause and commendation. There is commendation is like salt in the food. If you put a handful of salt in food, you have ruined the whole thing, but salt is needed. So there is a way that Satan begins to raise people in the name of loyalty. They will sing your praises to a point where fasting becomes unnecessary. The things that you did that brought you there, you no longer will have the, the, the press for it again. Why should I pray eight hours? Why should I pray two hours? Why should I do what I was doing in the house of God? 
and satan helps you by orchestrating men who can keep singing your praises until the praises become louder than the voice of god those of us that god is helping listen to me carefully I know some of you admire us and you clap and once we are coming in all the protocol that escort us those are just little little conveniences to show honor do not get caught up with some of those deceptions if that is your idea of ministry and that is what you are building yourself into then casualty will be waiting for you thank God for the honor thank God for all of these things that we receive but can I tell you this? Complacency. Satan can participate in singing your praise. There is something about the human spirit when you are appreciated. And that is true. That is wonderful. But Satan knows what over celebration can do to a human spirit. It is not only when he attacks you with evil that he destroys you. Satan is not stupid. He has an advantage of age. He has studied this humanoid species of mankind. He knows our vulnerability. And he knows that when I am suffering, chances are that I will be close to God. When I'm trying to grow a church, when I'm trying to grow my influence, chances are that I will pay attention in keeping to the things that make for greatness. But when you get to a point where all the institutions of men are located for accreditation, now vet you and accredit that you are a man approved of God. There is no more point to be proved. The TV stations have accredited that God has called you. All the award institutions have accredited that God has called you. The ministry results have accredited that God has called you. So now what is left? If it's branches, you have it. If it's money, you have it. If it's miracles, you have it. If it's a good sermon, you have it. What is left? That is why the beginning of a believer's journey must maintain the formula and the protocol used in scripture. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. And at the end of everything, it is still God. I can tell you that many of us right now are sincere satan has tried the formula of backsliding and it doesn't seem to be as effective again because there are many people who are generally waking the body of christ up to the fact that look it pays to be fervent with god so satan has changed his strategy this message you see i saw it in a vision the reason why i would not say i saw it in a vision is because i want your understanding to be grounded on doctrine not a man's experience are we together now i saw that this thing the deception of manipulating the human spirit by giving you a sense of applause a sense of arrival and it now leads to complacency whether i pray or not you will not know all you know is the apostle joshua selman you love who you listen to but it is me and god that knows the current reality of our relationship I can bask in the applause of people whereas at that point with God your voice is going down someone rise up on your feet we are going to pray for two minutes or, or five minutes listen this prayer no moving around I like you to pray from the depth of your heart mean business with God you came for a conference a time where you will search your heart the first prayer I know that you have prayed and prayed but I want us to pray the prayer of the psalmist. He said, try my heart. Search my heart. Try it. If there is any wicked way in me, lead me to the way everlasting. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and pray, Abel Kuta. Shalike paranda skata brekate kete baladaba. Ke parakata bagados kata prende skate lekata. Shanakate barandos kotobraske di baladash. Are you praying? Prayer warriors, pray. The vessels that will be used in this city, pray, pray, pray. 
it is beyond impartation it is beyond listening to messages there are forces assigned to mantles there are forces assigned to destinies with a primary assignment of ensuring that your voice is no longer heard at the mountain of Israel this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind I press onto the mark of the high calling in Christ the Bible says looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him the Bible says he endured the cross he despised the shame is someone praying hallelujah now listen the Bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it admonishes us it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight weight jealousy weight bitterness weight competitions weight it is not only sin you lay down you lay down weights weights useless weights competition comparing yourself to yourself it says and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus he says who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame we must obtain grace to cry before the lord that every weight that's our next prayer point every weight now listen you don't have to be bad to be a victim of weights you just have to be human eventually you will find yourself in unnecessary competitions you find yourself in petty jealousy you find yourself distracted by so many things you are going to cry that every weight that will not allow you ascend to the mountain where your voice will be heard that weight must drop dead now lift your voice and pray mean it with jesus christ every weight it's time to grow in the spirit every weight every distraction every hindrance of the flesh every weight someone is praying weights that hinder your hearing bitterness hatred backbiting jealousy weights
It says, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. His yoke is easy, and his burden is light. Few more minutes, and we're done for this session. In the name of Jesus hallelujah last prayer point Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the strong or the mighty glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches he says but let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me in this kingdom the pride of a believer is not just mundane achievements as important and motivating as they are i do not downplay the place of those things we need to make progress psychologists tell us that one of the indices the principal index that measures fulfillment is progress to the degree to which you perceive that you are making progress that is the degree to which you find fulfillment so i don't downplay the place of progress but let me tell you this the real pride of a believer in this kingdom is that you understand and you know him john 17 and verse 3 jesus praying said this is eternal life that they may know thee the one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent this is eternal life solomon explored everything that we desire to explore money reputation fame everything his eyes desired he pursued it so as far as human the human standard of achievement is concerned he got everything but hear what he said at the end of his life he said vanity upon vanity all is vanity that is not a statement to endorse mediocrity is a reality from the standpoint of anything minus god that is the result of anything minus god and he says here is the conclusion of the matter he says of reading many books there is no end and much study is only a weariness to the soul he says this is the conclusion of the matter to fear god and to keep his commandments he says this is the whole duty of man so we're going to pray can I add one more prayer point? Pray and cry that every force fighting the oil of God upon your life. They will not go by default. This is why you were given dominion. You are going to have to cause that spirit to let you go that you find visibility. Listen, listen, listen. I have met in my life I have met men of God, Pastor Sir. I have met sincere people, people of, of impeccable character, people of integrity and soundness. And I am shocked that even their community does not know they are there. Can I tell you, influence is important because it is not only important that your voice be heard, it must be heard on the mountain. Are we together now? Habakkuk chapter 2 says, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. There is an elevated position where you must be for the, the purposes of God through you to be heard and known. And there are spirits that have kept mighty men down. I have met intercessors. I have met prophets, genuine people. I have met apostles indeed. I have met people that I myself had to just go back and say, my goodness, from whence did this kind of breed come from? But you never hear their voice anywhere 
because there are powers Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18 son of man what seest thou he said four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah against Jerusalem against Israel three things Judah your praise Jerusalem your covenant and your peace are we together Israel your promise they have lifted up themselves against it he says they have lifted up themselves so that no man doth lift up his head please take this last prayer point seriously there are many of you here God must give you visibility the truth is that by by the grace of God you have found expression God has shown you honor you have worked in keeping with the principles that make for greatness you have entered your season of appearing except that these horns have vowed to keep you down the way they kept all who are with you down but can I tell you this the Bible says that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing you are going to pray with determination that in the name of Jesus everything that has pegged me down to not allow this prophetic ministry find visibility to not allow this this apostolic dimension find visibility either in a bell kuta covering the glory of the assembly god has trusted me with or the group or whatever platform please lift your voice and pray psalm 3 says many a day that rise up against me many a day that say there is no help for you he says but thou O lord art a shield for me you are my glory you are the lifter up of my head someone is praying release yourself from that age-long captivity there are daughters of zion in the similitude of deborah that must rise there are men of fire and power that must rise in this time and hear me if you are silent you will be silenced declare thou that ye might test be justified go ahead and declare in the name of Jesus freedom from the captivity that stops me from ascending the mountain so that my voice be heard in Israel pray pray is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean roll to the Lord of Lords we will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day praise Adonai all the nations of the earth all the angels and the saints sing praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day praise Adonai all the nations of the earth hallelujah 
hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now please hear me let me encourage you I want you tonight to invite everybody within this city whether there is if there is no space they can hang around anywhere because I believe that God will be doing three things tonight one will have a moment where the Word of God would be communicated but then number two I believe that the Lord truly is in the business of setting the captives free do not forbear with evil evil always comes pregnant if you leave it it will give birth to children around you are we together there are times when the Lord will give instructions and say kill everybody plus the children let nothing leave so I like you to come prepared that whatever it is that has mocked God in your life if God be God it must come down this night we also have the opportunity to minister to the sick but more importantly I believe that God sent me on assignment to connect people to the mantles of their destiny this is not just impartation of falling down and standing up no that what has been looking for you the graces some of you have seen these meetings in dreams just help them please some of you have seen this in visions some of you what you see in your dreams and your encounters is not consistent with what is happening there are people pastors leaders of churches and ministries sincere people who love jesus but can i tell you it takes a connection with that grace isaiah 61 says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me too then it begins to list all those possibilities happen there because of the anointing so everything you would see from then on refer it to the presence of the anointing on, on you to love jesus sincerely and not contact the genuine grace for your destiny will end you in frustration let me tell you it is frustrating to not be evil you are not insincere you are not demonic you are not diabolical you are authentic yet you are still stunted you see you receive the same results with people who do not love god he said the spirit of wisdom came upon joshua because moses anointed him to anoint means to legitimize your operation to anoint means to declare you as legitimate in the realm of the spirit so that the realm of the spirit respects your operation the anointing is not just about oil it's a system of authorization we have to stop here father thank you for the sessions that we've had and lord in jesus name i pray Amen. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Kete branda kata pa kotos koto preke teke ne kata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.